Good morning. It's Sunday, September 15th. I'm Lisa Evers in the Fox 5 Newsroom. Thank you for joining us live on the Fox Local app. Another top official is leaving Mayor Adams' administration just two days after former police commissioner Edward Caban resigned. Making the announcement last night, Mayor Eric Adams says City Hall Chief Counsel Lisa Zornberg is stepping down. She has been in the top legal position for the past 13 months. A 17-year-old has been arrested in connection with a deadly wrong-way crash on the Henry Hudson Parkway. A 38-year-old man was killed tragically the day before his wedding. His 40-year-old cousin was also killed. The suspect faces several charges, including vehicular manslaughter. Checking the forecast today, sunny and comfortable. Tonight, pleasant. Tomorrow, more sun. Drivers beware. Those who take the Brooklyn Queens Expressway can expect massive traffic backups this weekend and the next one. A section of the BQE is reduced to one lane as the Department of Transportation installs equipment to monitor the weight of trucks. Fox 5's Duarte Geraldino takes us to Brooklyn. At one point, traffic slowed to less than nine miles per hour Saturday because on a segment of the Staten Island bound BQE in downtown Brooklyn, Thousands of vehicles are being forced to squeeze through just one lane. It was freaking horrible. I moved like two exits in an hour. It was the left lane that was closed, so like it was only like two lanes going on. And then people were even using like the emergency lane to like go through the front. So it was like, it was bad. It was, it was that bad? Yeah. And this is going to be the new normal for the next two weekends. Man, this traffic is terrible right now. I gotta go, but oh. it was terrible. <laughs> the DOT is reducing lanes to make room for equipment used to install weigh in motion technology. This tech is designed to reduce the number of overweight vehicles on the highway. Already underneath the BQE, you can begin to see signs of wear and tear caused by the changing seasons, the chemicals, the salt that's used to make sure the roads are passable when it's icy, and the pressure caused by overweight vehicles. A 2021 report issued by Mayor Bill de Blasio's administration found overweight trucks and the deterioration of the cantilever could make this section of the BQE unsafe and unable to carry existing levels of traffic within five years. To buy more time so they can solve the bigger problem, they're forcing traffic to slow down, frustrating so many drivers. The traffic was horrible. Like, it was just crazy back there. And then there were certain people that would not let nobody, like, go in. Like, literally, I'm trying to go in one exit, and I couldn't go in, so I had to go in the next exit. And that next exit was just horrible. Like, it was just, traffic was whack. Way in motion technology is already installed along some parts of the BQE. DOT data shows it reduced the number of overweight vehicles by 64% along the triple cantilever, but that's little consolation to drivers stuck in weekend traffic. You were what? Stuck for 45 minutes. Stuck for 40? Yeah, and we're going to New Jersey. Yikes, good luck. To be clear, the lane closures on the BQE near Adams Street to Washington Street will be in effect from 1 a.m. Saturday through 5 a.m. Monday, this weekend and next weekend. Your best bet is going to be to take mass transit if you can. Duarte Geraldino, Fox 5 News. Investigators on Long Island are saying they'll be releasing new information on a Gilgo Beach homicide victim during a press conference Monday. They'll also give an update on where things stand with a Gilgo Beach homicide investigation. Accused serial killer Rex Hoyerman is not expected to be hit with additional charges. A bit of a rocky start to the school year in Patterson, New Jersey. The district has 152 teacher vacancies, and they're having to use an online learning program to cover their workload. Fox Five Stephanie Bertini is digging into where staffing issues stand and how students feel about the online system. Eastside High School is one of several schools within the Patterson Public Schools District where virtual teachers are being used when required. Yeah, only my first period. Yeah. First period, that class has a virtual teacher? Yeah. This student says the virtual setup reminds him of the pandemic days. It's kind of like, um, you remember when COVID was around? It's the same thing. The school district just approved a $2 million deal with Proximity Learning. The Texas-based company brings certified teachers to classroom settings virtually. 
was very boring. The superintendent of schools says it's required as a result of the teacher shortage. This is not just um, a situation here currently in this district. We know we've seen it. It's a nationwide issue. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that we have a certified teacher in every classroom. And so, you know, one of the options is this online platform. This student says the learning environment can be a bit boring at times. There is still supervision, though he says some counselors come in and like look at what's happening this student says she's indifferent what would you prefer do you prefer the teacher in the class i mean it don't really matter to me because i'm gonna i'm gonna get my work done regardless as a student though she says she sees why this model may be a problem for some but some people need like an actual teacher in the class you feel me while the superintendent maintains real live teachers are best my preference would be obviously to have a person in the classroom in person, um, but parents understand that we are literally trying everything to bring in teachers into the classroom. In Patterson, New Jersey, Stephanie Bertini, Fox 5 News. Experts say giant venomous spiders are on the way to the city. The Joro spiders have recently been spotted along the New Jersey border. Back in June, they were seen in Georgia, and since then, they've been spotted in South Carolina, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and other states. Despite their scary appearance, the experts also say they're not a threat to humans. Well, the excitement is building for the New York City Football Club Stadium project that's coming to Queens in 2027. As Fox 5's Kendall Green shows us, you can now experience what the NYC FC Stadium will look like. The New York City Football Club, since their start in 2015, made themselves at home at Yankee Stadium and City Field. But they're laying out more details about their major goal, building their home in Willits Point, Queens. This week, they launched a new stadium experience showing off the strides they've made, designing their own stadium following city council's approval back in April. I don't think that there is a better location for us. NYCFC's COO Jennifer O'Sullivan shares the Willits Point neighborhood stands to gain a boost of an estimated $6.1 billion in revenue, including 2,500 units of affordable housing, a public school, and a hotel. This isn't just building a stadium. This is creating a brand new neighborhood in an area of the city and an area of Queens in particular um, that's really been been ignored and, and desolate for years. The 100 percent privately funded stadium will also stand as a first in professional soccer and a first of any professional sports venue in the city. We will be the first in, in Major League Soccer to be building a, a fully electric um, building. The 25,000 seat stadium's west stand is designed with premium hospitality seating with a lounge just yards from where players enter the field. The North Stand will bring the noise from a supporter's wall for seating and standing fans. It's the steepest that's allowed in MLS, but it will just be an intimidating wall of, of fans um, who are loud, who are passionate, who are bringing the energy and the excitement. The stadium's grand opening in 2027 will come on the heels of the 2026 FIFA World Cup final, hosted right here in the region. We have more soccer fans here than anywhere else in the country, and so um, those are catalysts. Those are leverage points for us to really kind of grow and, and develop. 2,500 units of affordable housing, a school, hotel, retail shops, and this is just a year after the FIFA World Cup. Safe to say this is perfect landing ground for soccer fans in New York City. In Willis Point, Kittle Green, Fox 5 News. A Jane's Addiction concert in Boston came to an abrupt halt, and not for technical reasons, but a fight on stage between band members. Video posted on social media shows 65-year-old lead singer Perry Farrell lunging at guitarist Dave Navarro, even taking a swing at him. Navarro held his arm out to keep Farrell at bay until the singer was dragged away, all of it on stage. That's when the show ended. Farrell's wife posting on Instagram says his frustration has been growing because his felt his voice was being drowned out by the music. No word yet on what this means for the remaining tour dates. It was the dumbest purchase I've ever made in my life. Those are the words of Saturday Night Live star Colin Jost to People magazine. He's referring to the decommissioned Staten Island ferry he recently purchased, along with comedian Pete Davidson. The two bought the vessel for nearly $300,000 back in 2022. The plan reportedly was to turn it into an entertainment vessel. Joe says renovations have been made, but it still looks like the Staten Island Ferry. A final check of the forecast today, sunny and comfortable. Tonight, pleasant. Tomorrow, more sun. And that does it for us this morning. I'm Lisa Evers. Have a really great day. Remember, Fox 5 News is always streaming here on the Fox local app.